Ani bujo, gokinawia, mindegeda, mino gishikat. Every day that we gather here on campus, we acknowledge that Wilfrid Laurier University and its campuses are located on the Haldeman Tract, traditional territory of the Neutral, Atawandaran, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee. This land is part of the Dish with One Spoon Treaty between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples and symbolizes the agreement to share, protect our resources, and not to engage in conflict. From the Haldeman Treaty of October 25th, 1784, this territory is described as six miles deep from each side of the river, the Grand River, beginning at Lake Erie and extending in proportion to the head of said river, which them and their posterity are to enjoy forever. This treaty was signed by the British and their allies, the peoples of the Six Nations, after the American Revolution. Despite being the largest reserve demographically in Canada, those nations now reside on less than 5% of this original territory. We hold in our hearts the many survivors of residential schooling in Canada and the many lost children who we are still trying to find today and forever. So the 12 composers I've chosen for this program are all of a generation. They were all born in the final years of the 19th century, between 1872 and 1899. So that means they all would have lived through, experienced World War I, all but three of them would have experienced World War II, and a handful of them had even experiences of the disco era. Anyway. Of the first four pieces in this program, I think two of them are quite uh, well known as composers, Lily Boulanger and American composer Florence Price. Perhaps less well known is Croatian composer Dora Peacevic. And I was interested to read a quote recently from another uh, Croatian composer, Sara Gvonaric. She's quoted recently in Van magazine as having said, I'm certain that if Peacevic wasn't Croatian or a woman, she would probably be as well known as Brahms. So then we also have Russian composer Leokadia Kasparova, and she is most well known these days as having been Stravinsky's piano teacher, which is remarkable enough in itself. But I encourage you to read up on her life and to uh, learn about the incredible challenges that she had to deal with in her life and her career. So here are three pieces all on the subject of roses.
the next four composers had hugely significant careers and reputations as composers and musicians. In each case, I find it interesting to note their influences as well as whom they influenced. In the case of Marion Bauer, Nadia Boulanger's first American student, she herself was the teacher of Milton Babbitt and also of the renowned musical critic Harold Schoenberg. Johanna Müller-Hermann, she was a student of Alexander Zemlinsky in Vienna. Uh, of course, Germaine Taillefer's membership in Les Six, along with Millot, Poulenc and others, that is well known. And then as far as Tasmanian composer, Kitty Parker goes, Percy Granger was her teacher, mentor and lifelong champion.
I'm fairly resistant to the phrase women composers, primarily because, I mean, come on, they are just composers. Uh, this is why I chose to use the French word compositrice um, for the title of this recital. But also, in the case of the next two composers, these were, these were pieces written by teenagers of age 13 or 14 or so. So it would actually be incorrect to call them women composers. Following these two teenager composed pieces are the final two pieces of today's program. Again, I would strongly encourage you to research the lives of both Dutch composer Rosie Wertheim and French composer Marguerite Canal. Wertheim was a, a woman with a significant musical career and um, as well, she generously gave to her fellow humans in the times of great turmoil and darkness of the 1930s and 40s. Uh, French composer Marguerite Canal also uh, had her life and career quite affected by World War II. Um, as well, things were not great with her music publisher husband, whom she divorced. Upon their divorce, he refused to allow her the rights to her own compositions. So look those two up. They're less known, but fantastic composers deserving to be heard much more than they have been. Thank you.